back to My View TV, the people's platform, the home of undiluted news, reviews, updates, and your daily dose of entertainment. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Leave us a comment, like, share, and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything where you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple me. What go on, my people? Hope everybody you know, okay? Hope everybody you know, all right? From you getting notification, you know say somebody else dead. And you know say me, I'm going to give you a ball to ball commentary. And make you know what go on, power to go on. But I'm ready to start right now, so yet. I'm going to look at Westmoreland and go go on one piece of update. A suspected lottery scammer from Rotown in Westmoreland has been charged following his arrest during a special operation by the police yesterday. The accused has been identified as 21-year-old Tafari Pinock, otherwise called Taffy. The police said that between the hours of 4 a.m. and 8 a.m., lawmen from the lottery scamming task force searched Pinock home. His cell phone was found to have several files populating with names, address, telephone numbers, and bank information of persons residing overseas. Pinock was subsequently charged. Charged with possession of identified information and possession of access device. His court date is being finalized. Let me tell the police them something. It keep on family member them finalize one funeral fee, you know. That is all you need for do. Slap on them criminal boy. Yeah. Say what I said, and I mean what I said. And me not take him up. People, people, stop when I do and clean out to the ears. Good. Because I want to listen to this one. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you something. Anybody laugh, going to hell. Don't laugh. A corporate era man told the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court that he broke the nightly curfew because his girlfriend, that is what him say. His girlfriend had another man at his home. You hear me say? His home. Home, H I S. She never said fear home. He said female. The man admitted to breaching the curfew and was fined under the Disaster Risk Management Act. The court heard that he was seen along the road at about 1 40 a.m. And when he was cautioned by the police, he said, Officer, I'm a woman, bring man for me. So me never want to hurt him or him hurt me. So me left. Well, I don't know. Only tell me only that do. My girl is friend them. What would you do? That is what me ask you. Know, what would I do? If a woman bring man for me, I don't want us. What would I do? Having heard that police report, senior judge Lorian Cole Montague reduced the fine she had planned to impose. I was going to fine you 40000 but that one hurts, the judge revealed. The man was ordered to pay 30000 or face six months imprisonment. Kill him, then him not go walk off free now, but no, 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 no. Petty shop judge said, yeah, woman. That's a charge of 30 grand, you understand? Me no said about other name thing, but anyway, people, more news. Long time me no chat to me dear old friend. So watch out she gonna make a grand appearance on the channel right, 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 right now. One person is now in police custody and two others are being sought by the St. Anne's police in connection with the murder of 65-year-old hotel manager Clyde Taylor. Who landed down? Me tell you something, friend, I'm gonna make a grand entrance. Long time we no hear from her. Yesterday afternoon, about 12.30, um, someone reportedly saw a car in bushes in Top Hill and went to check on the vehicle when they realized that um, something was not right. So they alerted the police. And when they went to the location, they found the body in the trunk of the car. And um, when they inspected, they realized that um, the body had a chop room. So it becomes a homicide investigation. I spoke with the commander who reported that the investigation is very well advanced. They have one person in custody, a male, and they are looking for two other persons who they believe can support the investigation. But in speaking with him, he's quite confident that where they are with the investigation, they will be able to um, solve this matter in short order. Stephanie, I try our best to keep it simple these days. Only thing she says, arm this and arm that, and only for arm, 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 arm. But that was Stephanie people. You understand? We are interrogating him. We are still uh, looking for two other persons of interest who we believe will be able to assist us with this investigation. At this time, I want to use the opportunity to express our sincere condolences to his bereaved uh, family and to let them know that we are doing everything in our power to ensure that this investigation is brought to a satisfactory conclusion. Well, I don't know. We are going to write up at the office to talk to Mr. Lane Mount. Can you go tell about the collaboration to find the Wally Pagod? Well, at this point, we have been counting the number of weapons that we have discovered at the 214 warehouse at the corner of Industrial Terrace and Marcus Garvey Drive. Uh, the customs detected what looks like a suspicious uh, package. Uh, called in SeaTalk, uh, and together we've been searching and finding so far 18 handguns and three rifles, an assorted number of 
uh, rounds of ammunition. So the operation is ongoing. We'll continue this into tomorrow and see the extent of what we can uncover. But it's part of our Get Every Legal Gun campaign. As I had mentioned at our last press conference, we are working very closely with Customs, who has been on board with uh, finding these weapons and our intelligence services. So this is another uh, significant seizure in the Get Every Illegal Guns campaign. Uh, we are going to be relentless on this. The guns, the gunmen, and the gangs are not going to go unnoticed. They're not going to hide anymore. The guns will be found. The gunmen will be taken into custody, and the gangs will be dismantled. This process is ongoing, and we're not going to stop. Mount Commissioner just done talk to you. Look on the picture phone and set the paper and say exactly what I talk about. Say so like a segment that I dedicate to the police system. So we'll land it now. And at the Public Safety Traffic Enforcement Branch Speested, Assistant Commissioner of Police Gary McKenzie said plans are in place to deploy additional security to monitor the flow of traffic on Monday as face-to-face -face school is set to resume. Yes, people. Full swing. Remember saying that them stop talking about COVID now. You understand it just change the focus on the the UK and Russia war. COVID is no more. You understand? Said that I said that I mean what I said. I only can't say it for yourself. Them now talk about it no more. But anyway, listen Gary now. The briefs have already been communicated to our various operatives. It is a combination of traffic and other patrols because we recognize that it is going to be a holistic effort. Management of the intersection, various points that we have the tendency for blockages and congestion. Those will be monitored. We will have to survey these roads as well. Sometimes we have broken down vehicles and so we have to get those moved very quickly to ensure that there is no congestion. A few seconds of delay because of an obstruction can cause a backlog for miles. They are very much aware of that. Persons will be out much more earlier. So what we find now is that about 6.30 to 7 there is peak traffic. But there is likely to be traffic out from about quarter to six and so on. And so they will have to be patient if they come out at 7, 7.30, 8. Because we don't expect any blockage, but certainly traffic will not be as free flow as they would have it before the turnout of school. That is a fact. We recognize that traffic will be out very early than what we are experiencing. And so early and strategic deployment will be the order of the day. We have mapped all the areas where we have schools and the movement of traffic to include pedestrian traffic in communities. And so one of the things that we have to do is to ensure that we patrol and we monitor these communities, the main roads, as well as the transportation centers and other areas where there are gatherings, especially for children who are awaiting transportation and are moving out. It will be on full rollout and it, it will be working. One of the things that we do, I must tell you, is that during the peak, we really concentrate on getting people to their destination. And so we have worked out some strategies. We will not be stopping vehicles to delay, but certainly we will take information and follow up where we need to do it because we can't allow the public to suffer. We will not do that. But what we expect is that we expect cooperation. We expect the kind of maturity and conformity with the law that will ensure that all of us are able to use the roadways and head to our various destinations. We have the capacity, and even if we are not able to stop vehicles, once we get hold of the information from the registration plates, mm -hmm. we can do the follow-up. We will find the owners. By virtue of the, the road traffic law, owners of public transportation vehicles must communicate the information on their employees. And if they do not do it, then they are susceptible to being prosecuted. And we can do so for other private vehicles as well. So there are multiplicity of strategies that we can use to ensure that we get the job done. Let the most see one while people start celebrating. I say, finally, my Joe Red One News, and nobody not dead. Think again. You understand this is Jamaica? 
every single day somebody die about here and I have to keep on posting on that. So the man them slap for the win. Yes, people, the man them slap for the win. I fall about. Understand? So the win they da fall about. And then find somebody dead to win a paper. And that's and they find one girl dead. Them call her squid. Call Kadin. Everybody know that girl. Them find her two mile out of her house dead. And that look like a natural cast. People still dead from natural cast and them something to man. If you look on the thumbnail, you see two of them picture. That is Duane and that is squid or Kadin or whatever. No one know her as but. She dead of natural cast. Them say when them go and circle Kadin house, them just see Kadin unresponsive. So Kadin dead. Natural cast still like kill people and them something to. And a bunch of knife alone. But people, yeah, don't go nowhere. Don't go too far. Go and go boil no soup. Me come back soon. Alright?